We pray at this Holy Eucharist for the grace to be true followers of Christ, so that we too can inherit the joys of salvation. Holy Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of all who have died in our parish and all of our loved ones, and for all of our parishioners' intentions, and for all those who have joined us on Facebook Live. Let us now stand and sing, welcoming our Savior, Lucia.
Oh, mm-hmm. 
Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And as he was transfigured before them, his face shone like the sun, and his cloth became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with them. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning again, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today we are celebrating a great feast, the Feast of Transfiguration of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we are so blessed for this feast to fall on a Sunday, which unusual and that's all the time transfiguration happened on our uh, we celebrate this feast on Sunday and sometimes on a weekday and we lost we lost the importance or we do not give much attention to the value to the importance of this feast when it happened during the week but it is on a Sunday, which is the day of the Lord, where we come to celebrate as brothers and sisters to celebrate our faith, to be nourished by the presence of the Lord in the Eucharist, where at the table, at the altar of the Lord, the Lord offers himself, the Lord transforms before our eyes through the bread and wine and become true body and true blood of his and he gave us he gave us to be nourished to be strengthened on our journey the journey of faith with that my brothers and sisters a question that i would like you to ponder and sometimes we cannot heard on the news and people that you know, articulated all kind of ideology about the veracity of Christianity, whether Christianity is a myth, whether it's true what they said in the Bible, whether it's true. And uh, Christianity is not a myth. Christianity is a reality. A divine reality. Christianity, I would say, is a gift from God. It's a gift from Christ Himself. And sometimes we heard so many people are saying things. Sometimes 
that could, uh, if we listen to them, we could be discouraged. We could even question ourselves, question our faith, question our belief. If we do not really know our faith, that's why it is uh, so important, my brothers and sisters, uh, to really every day to make that request from the Lord to say, Lord, increase my faith. Increase our faith in your word, in your presence, in every day, every day, in my everyday life. Because I need to grow in your presence. As we celebrate today in the transfiguration of our Lord, my brothers and sisters, we heard, we read, we just read the first reading from Prophet Daniel. If you want to understand really the feast we are celebrating today, we have to go to that book. Daniel chapter 7. This is uh, will help us understand really what the feast we are celebrating today. The value, the importance. What Prophet Daniel said on the top of the holy mountain. On the mountain. And Prophet Daniel made it clear what had to come what had to come and the Messiah the one who is supposed to come is the Messiah is Jesus the King the one who come who will come to all the earth the one who will come as our Savior as our King the one who will establish his way and we heard that And they are very interconnected, the gospel and the first reading. Of course, St. Paul tells us about the witnesses, the first reading and the gospel. The first reading mentioned the characters, and uh, the gospel mentioned the characters, those who were present there. Jesus went on a holy mountain. The mountain is a place of encountering. A place where we go to encounter with Christ, with God. To enter into a conversation, not any type of conversation. To go into the intimacy with the Lord. And it was very important for the Lord to go to that holy mountain. Because what is waiting for, what was waiting for the Lord, the Lord needed to consult with his father about his mission. The Lord needed to assure. And it is in that encounter, my brothers and sisters, that many things will happen. And the Lord consulted with God about his mission. And then it is through that mission, he finds strength, he finds courage, he finds assurance from his father. And the one he was conversing, he was conversing with Moses and Elijah. And these two figures are very important in the history of salvation. These two figures, Moses and Elijah, the kind of prophecy, the law and the prophets, and then between the law and the prophets will be realized, will be fulfilled in whom? In Jesus himself. In Jesus himself. You see, there are two just that position that could help us to understand that what we celebrate today is not just is not a myth, it is a reality. The fulfillment of the scripture by the prophet be told us. And then it was the told he was conversing with them. 
And they fought of their eyes, the disciples, and Jesus took Peter, James, John. And these other three men. That's a very important role, play a very important role in the history of Jesus.
before their own eyes. And the Lord continued to transform before our own eyes. Don't you believe so? Transfiguration. Metamorphosis. Eh? Like all the form. All the form. Transformation is not the normal one, eh? Something beyond the form, eh? Beyond what we see. Beyond what happened to us, what happened before our eyes. And it showed us we all will be transformed. And as a matter of fact, that transformation must happen every day in our life. If we say we are followers of Jesus Christ, we are Christians, we are one of His, we need to allow that transformation to take place in our life. It requires sacrifices. It requires faith. It requires struggle. It requires confidence in the Lord to place ourselves in the Lord. And it happened before our eyes every day, every time we gather as people of God to celebrate the Eucharist as a gift. Is that it? Yeah. Yes. It happened every day. Every time we gather here at the table of the Eucharist, when you come and when we elevate the Eucharist, we say, Blessed are you. This is the Lamb of God. This is our King who takes away the sins of the world, who takes away your sins. This is the one who will, who wants to give you a new life, who wants to strengthen you, who wants to give you courage. This is the Lamb of God. So my brothers and sisters, as we celebrate the transfiguration of our Lord, we celebrate our own journey. We celebrate our own life. The life that we will become the life that awaits for us. So, however, this life began today. It began today in the way that we live our life, in the way that we manifest our faith, in the way that we commit ourselves, and for the Lord to let His will to do in our life. What can we ask the Lord today as we gather here this morning to serve the transfiguration? We need to ask the Lord in our prayer, deep in our prayer, by listening to His word, by going deeper, deeper, we ask the Lord to open our heart, our, our mind, to open our eyes to see him, to see him in our brothers and our sisters, to those who are suffering, to those who need a push, to those who need a word of kindness, a word of love, for them to know that they too need that transfiguration, they need to be transfigured. They do that they need the voice that call, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. To hear that from the mouth of the brothers and sisters. To tell them, you are a beloved son. You are a beloved brother. Therefore, your heavenly father loves you. He wants you to listen to him. He wants you to obey Him. In so doing, you will have a joyful, a peaceful, a transformative life founded in Jesus Christ, who is our King, our Savior, in the Lord the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Major brothers and sisters, let us stand and confess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not me. Unsubstantial with the Father, who through him all things are made, for us men and for us salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, who was part of the first period, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Father, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven. And he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to the judge of the dominion of the dead. And we see you on the time of the I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, of the giver of life. What's this from his Father and his Son? We with Father and Sons of God and glorified. We have spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We come to you, Father, inspired by the transfiguration of your beloved Son in us, that you bless us as we pursue that same unity and glory with you in eternity. We pray for the church under the leadership. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop, Thomas Wensky, all bishops, priests, and deacons, religious sisters and brothers, and the laity, that they may have a renewed vision of Christ's glory and commit to a caring and loving mission to restore and strengthen the faith of the people of God. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders and people of all the nations, we pray for our political leaders and our citizens that Christ, the Prince of Peace, may inspire peacemakers across the earth to work with courage to bring joy of heart and soul to all God's people. We pray to the Lord. The Lord the Lord. For our St. Helen Parish community, the Spirit of God lies deep in the heart and mind of every parishioner and family so that we may commit and dedicate our lives to Christ by caring for the poor, the homeless, and the hungry in our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we hear our prayer. We pray for the young people gathered in Lisbon with the Holy Father for World Youth that they may be inspired by the Holy Spirit to become active advocates of Christ among their communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are suffering from poverty and injustice. Our decisions this election year, that they may lead to more policies and programs to help them live with dignity. We pray for peace of the world and End to war, hate, and brutality. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died recently, for those who are sick, whose names are listed in the week's bulletin. May they celebrate everlasting life with Christ Jesus and find healing and comfort by the loving touch of Christ. And we pray for the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts and for all those who have asked for us to pray for them and their loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. O oh, powerful God, you are all light and in you there is no darkness. 
Let your light shine upon all for whom we pray, so that we may work gladly in your ways. We ask for this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Dear parishioners, the weekly collection posted in the bulletin shows that we are working below budget. Please remember your weekly contributions for the church. Very important and to support our parish community. Thank you and God bless. Wonderful 
he shouts for first in his head. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth. And before your majesty without end, we are glad.
children.
Please register your child for the 2023-2024 religious education school year. Classes will resume August 20th, 2023, after the 9 a.m. math. It is mandatory that all children register again this year to attend the Sunday and attend the Sunday masses. Please see Sister Catherine or pass by the church office to pick up a child registration form. Thank you and blessings. We have reached the time to work on our travel documents for the pilgrimage. Those who have not yet submitted their passport should bring a copy to the church office to or email to the travel agent. Thank you. The novena to St. Helen from August 9th, 2023 to August 17th, 2023 at 7 o'clock p.m. Beginning Sunday, November 13th, excuse me, beginning Sunday the 13th of August, the Novena Prayer will be said after each Mass, the English Creole in Spanish. The Triduum Novena in English begins August 9th and goes to August 11th, 7 p.m. Spanish will be August the 12th to the 14th at 7 p.m. The Creole will be from August 15th to the 17th at 7 p.m. The theme will be St. Helen, Woman of Mission and Evangelization. The St. Helen's Feast Day celebration is Friday, August 18th, 2023. The hospitality ministries of the Communities are responsible for the coordination of the gathering after the 10:30 mass. Please take home a copy of the Sunday bulletin for more information. It is important to read it so you can be informed. The schedule of all church activities is posted in the bulletin. Thanks again. Have a blessed day and be safe. Wait. Thank you. Let us pray. May the heavenly nourishment we have received, O oh Lord, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, whose radiant splendor you will to make manifest in his glorious transfiguration. We ask for this, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration has ended go in peace to serve and love the Lord and love one another. Thanks be to God. God. Once again, happy feast of transfiguration. And also I would like to say thank you to Mr. Wana for being here with us.